Hello guys, and uh, welcome to my second recording, uh, second of what you've seen. I've uh, been running into a few bugs recently with this software. It just goes, oh that's great, you, you've been recording for 20 minutes. Let's forget that entire thing. Let's for, let, let's just, that never happened. That's great. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just setting up my scene right now, setting up my lighting. Um, Shifty, 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 and just so that way you guys, you know, know what's going on. Uh, after I just get these duplicated, shifty. Uh, now I'm just gonna open up uh, my screencasting. I hope you guys like this. Uber easy to set up too. Yep. Yeah, whatever. Uh, anyways, now the first thing, that, uh, well, the next thing that I'm gonna really change here is our viewport. Uh, I'm gonna be changing our display from multi texture to GLSL, and I understand that a lot of you guys won't have the ability to set this up, uh, especially those using like integrated graphics older than like, um, I, 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 it's really hardware dependent on, you know, whether or not it will like doing this. Uh, Basically what this does is it renders things in a different way than multi-texture normally does. It's going to allow for a lot of new, uh, a lot of different features. It's not a new thing, it's just a, one of those things that not a lot of people capitalize on. Sorry if I'm spinning it around, it's just habit for me to go blah, 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 blah. So, uh, one of the things, uh, well first things first, this is all going to be focused on UV mapping, texturing, uh, texture painting. So let's just get down and into it. Uh, first thing I'm going to be really doing here is going to be showing you guys the cube. Very simple, very very powerful stuff, and hopefully it's going to you know propel you into doing uh, more manual unwraps. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, in this set is just turn this into our UV image editor and this is my normal setup just because I like having my properties down here where they normally are um, so, sorry if I start sounding a little bit growly uh, a little bit sick so I'm just gonna open up a few of the textures that I got for this video and the second one is gonna be dirt I don't own these images I don't claim to they're just a couple that I ripped off the internet you know, Google search for the win. Um, and here we go. The first texture that I'm going to be loading in is our image that we have here. Now, once you have them loaded in, I always load them in here first just because it's so much nicer. Uh, it's just simpler for me, really. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just open up the image. And I don't need to hit this again. It's already loaded up into the cache of Blender. So gonna click on that dirt ain't that great we actually set it up like you would a material for you know blender render but it's gonna allow for real-time rendering not the same thing as your blender render obviously because it's much faster it doesn't allow for you know area lights well it does with the candy branch but you guys this is a 101 um, so uh, you're gonna notice that these streaks happen along the side here and that's due to how this is generated and how it's spread. It's being shined down from the top, this image right here. And so the top and bottom are looking good. The corners are actually mirrored here because it's just projecting down. This darkness is transpiring or like raining down on this edge here. So I'm just going to change over to UV. And that doesn't really do anything. Until we go into this. We go into edit mode. Hit U. Then unwrap. Great. And now it's projecting on every side using the same image on all the sides. Now this is when I'm going to start to show off one of the features of GLSL. See that how it's shining on the side there? Well, if we go into textured mode here, we're just going to crack open normal. And yeah. And as we get closer, you're going to see that we actually can see bumps. Bumps that aren't there. Normal mapping. 
And I'm, I never leave this at one because it always looks like garbage. And people that do just need to be taken care of like old yeller. Anyways, so we got this shine going on here. And it's just, you know, a little bit of extra detail. It's for the lols. And here's really the thing though. This is this image being projected on each and every side here. So to kind of show that off, I'm just going to go into texture here. And, oh, second texture that I'm just going to label as dirt, of course, because it is dirt. should be treated like dirt. And next thing we're opening up here is going to be grass. Here we go, images. Opening up our grass texture that we've already loaded up in here. And we're just going to hide it like the red-headed stepchild. And here we go. It looks pretty normal, and the reason I had to load this into here is because it shows up on this side for texture painting. There's our red-headed stepchild. Click grass, and now we can paint with grass. Well, it projects it onto all the other sides, and it follows all of the rules that we put into this dirt texture here. So once it gets loaded in, uh, the grass becomes a part of this bump texture, creating a new kind of bump on the front of it. See? Bump on the front of the log. And, and the hole in the middle of the sea. And really, even though we're te the uh, texture for grass is larger than the one that we have here for dirt, it's limited by the resolution of the dirt. Simply because that's the resolution of this image here. Now, this is obviously, you know, sometimes you'll do something like this if you really don't care or it's just being tiled anyways. Uh, but this is the least likely thing that you are to do when you're unwrapping. Uh, the next unwrapping that we're going to be working on here is just going into edge select here. I'm just going to grab around this way. <coughs> Copy first, learn later. My favorite motto. And hopefully if you guys monkey see and monkey do. Oh, allusion to what's going to be going on later. Whoa, look at me. And I'm just going to hit control E. And that's going to actually let us mark this as a seam around here. And you're going to kind of realize, and maybe you guys have, you know, glued together some cardboard, like, from maybe a cereal box or something like this. Um, but once we have this set up, we're going to select all vertices and UV unmap. Perfect. And also, whenever you UV unmap, uh, it shows up right here within the triangle thing, my bobber. UV map. You can create new UV maps, uh, you can use different ones, and there's reasons to do that, but once again, this is a 101. What do you know? Getting cut off from the start. And you're going to notice the texture is really looking kind of, you know, cruddy compared to what it was looking like before. And that's simply because instead of copying the whole image onto the face of this, we're limited once again by the resolution of the image. So higher resolution most of the time you know, better effect. Who knew? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so, now if we go in here and we start painting on the side, it starts showing up on here. It's like we're not painting on here, we're painting on here, and it's being projected onto this. Pretty easily said. Though we can mark across on the edges here, and you see that shows up on this edge, as well as this edge. So, yeah. Insert head explosion here, I guess. Who knows? Most of you guys probably don't even, you know, have already done something like this. Uh, but once again, this is a 101. Starting to see a pattern here? I do. Uh, next thing that we're going to do here is just going to load this back to our default because we've learned all that we can we can from this for right now. So it's time to kill our old QB here. And time to bring in the monkey head. Monkey. Susan looking better than ever. Uh, I also like that when she's added in in Blender 2.64, oh yeah, new release. Um, one of the things that is kind of different about her now is she actually loads facing the negative y-axis. Used to be she always popped up and everyone just, you know, ended up rotating her on the x-axis anyways. So, good job for changing something that hasn't been changed for like a decade. Um, anyway, so we're just going to need to add in our old material as we did before. Um, let's just create a new, well, 
first things first, let's get down to brass taxes here. I'm just going to add in the uh, subdivision surface modifier because let's face it, Susan is kind of really ugly if you don't do this. I'm going to apply that. And now within edit mode, all of our stuff shows up correctly. I'm just going to, you know, mark around this seam here and then mark around the seam right. Uh, by the way, that was alt right click to do loop select and then alt shift right click. Well, shift alt right click. There we go. And we can mark across like that. And it goes all the way around. What well, comes around goes around. And now we can just hit Control E, mark those seams. And now if we select the whole monkey here and UV project, there we have ripped a monkey's face off. Don't you feel great? You're bad, and you should feel bad. But if we check this out in texture mode here, of course we haven't added that material on it go dirt and what do you know once again it's being projected on like usual because we haven't changed it to UV yet it will use your default UV layer if you don't have a UV layer set though you can specify with the UV map once you start using multiple layers getting all fancy and such um, so this is about where it starts uh, to really show off some of the differences here uh, we only use two edges here so you're going to see on the eyebrows where there should be, you know, a lot denser resolution. And also along the ears, we're starting to see a really, really dense amount of pixels compared to, like, other spots. So that's not what we want. That's not where, what we're here for. And it's really time to, you know, optimize. So what I'm going to do here is just select the whole monkey. Press U. Smart UV Project. And this goes by angle limits 66 you can set these margins all that um, default normally works really good so just gonna do that the computer's gonna do all the thinking for you be careful when you're using a lot of vertices because guess what blender will freak out like usual all right, so here we are we got our UV on map set up there's the nose the eyes there's some distinguishable parts in here but you know it's like we threw the monkey into the blender. Oh, oh. Um, but we're going to notice also the seams are kind of showing up a lot more here. But that's why we go in and create a new image. Untitled, of course. And I'm just going to use that untitled image here as the base. Now, I thought my head against the keyboard for a while, trying to figure this out. But when you go into edit mode, it slaps back into here. If we just change this over to untitled, Ta-da, it's put on this image. And now all the painting that we do to it will be correct. I can't tell you how long I freaked out inside the last recording. Um, it really could have been embarrassing as well. Glad you didn't catch me. Uh, dirt texture is now being used by that. Isn't that great? I'm just going to call that monkey skin. Only in Blender can we say something so you know, primal. So just going to create our dirt texture from here. We've already created it. We just got to recreate it. Oh, dirt. Just going to get rid of that. Uh, we're going to hide it like the redheaded stepchild that it is. And now when we click on our dirt texture here, we can paint it. I feel like Picasso. I'm good, and I should feel good. And this is with the default resolution of like. It's 1024, yeah. Uh, we can increase the strength here, so that way it paints it on perfectly every single time uh, without having to go over it multiple times. But, 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 if we go to monkey skin now, we see all these changes that have happened. Well, this is still an internal image for Blender, so we can actually pack it as a PNG, and it's saved as a part of Blender. So if we save this file, make sure that you pack your images in, and then if you go to File, External Data, pack into Blend File. All your external images will just be slapped in, and you'll no longer have to worry about, oh, if I move this file, uh, Blender's going to think that it's still there, and all of a sudden my images will be gone, and I'll be left with a purple monkey. And no one likes purple monkeys. It's just a fact of life. Uh, if we go over to Normals now, once again, Ugly Normal of 1. 
there we go. Anything that hasn't been textured in has no bump mapping on it. So you can start to see how you can create different bump levels. You can create custom textures, cu custom bump uh, sets. In fact, that's how I did it with um, the alien head that I did before. It's a really, really simple, effective way to create bump maps. And also I did a, uh, a little bit of gimping to it. I can't say photoshopping because I didn't shop the thing. Yeah, open source for the win. Uh, just getting in behind the eyeballs. Once again, we can see that the eyebrows looking good. Well plucked, I must say. Um, looking good, looking good, looking good. Susan, you're just looking good all over. And then we can even switch over to our graphs. Hopefully this hasn't been, you know, the annoying e Eli shut up, get to the point part. Because pretty effective. Once you've got it all saved, you're good. And hopefully you've picked up a little bit from here. Uh, the last of what I'm going to be showing is a terrain. So I'm just going to insert plane here. Plain Jane. Scaling up. Resize. I guess it's resize from what it says here. But we all know it's scale. It starts with S. We don't hit R. That'd be stupid. Uh, Multi-resolution is what we'll be using for it. It's a lot like subdivide. Uh, well, it's a lot like subdivision surface, but it actually lets us manipulate the vertices created within sculpt mode, and that is just great. It's just fantastic. Um, subdivide a little bit further, and lower the levels a bit. There we go. Because no one likes a wimpy brush. I don't. Yep. Uh, a couple of the tools you might be wondering what's going on here. If you hold down control while you know clicking, it digs away. If you just click, it adds on. I normally use clay for this simply because it just works the best. It looks the best. It's just the best. And if you hold down shift, it's the smooth tool. See how it's showing up inside the uh, top left there? Yeah. What do you know? Blender's helping out. Uh, next thing you know, I'm going to be going into top orthographic view. i uh, going to be applying this Maltrace. Um, and you project from view. Isn't that great? Uh, let's see if I can just reload the image. Nope. I'll just create a brand spanking new image. Spank. Right there. Um, from there we'll just go into our material. New material. Texture. Image. On top of one. Texture mode. And what do you know? You guys already know what's going to happen. I'm going to paint the texture on. And normally you'd use like five or six different textures, you know, get it looking all pretty, work hard on it. Um, you're going to notice something right now. There's this black ring forming around. Once again, generated. It needs to be changed over to UV. Now all is good in the world. And we can create worlds. Really simple. Once again, Blender doing 99% of the work like a loss. Well, I really thank you guys for your time, and I hope it really didn't bore you guys. Um, hope to hear from you guys soon. Always, Like always, give me some feedback, and peace out.